So it seems like people didn't hate my last ink exploration, so I figured I'd do another one. I bought a bunch of ink recently. They come in little vials like this. They sell for about between $1.50 and $3 each. Uh, so they're pretty affordable. You get about three milliliters for that price, which is uh, about one and a half eyedropper installs or about two or three installs of a normal pen. So uh, from a per milliliter price, you're, you're paying a fair bit, but in an absolute cost, it's actually not very expensive. I've been filling up these platinum preppies, which are about $3 each. So it's not super cost effective, right? You can get an eyedropper, uh, sorry, you can get a glass pen or a uh, dip pen or something and do this more cheaply. But I like to actually write with the pen and get through most of that three milliliters uh, just to get a real good feel for the ink. So I just wanted to run through the colors I've been playing with and then uh, talk more deeply about the standouts. So I'll start this list with uh, just two standards, the Pilot Kanpeki and the Lamy Blue. I think those are inks most people will be familiar with and they're, they're both fine. Uh, not really my favorites, but they're good, a good basis for comparison. Then we have the Krishna Sailors. That is, uh, again, that's one of the ones we'll get into. I think that one's really phenomenal. It's just a really nice blue with really good shading. Uh, I've been really happy with it. And I don't know if you can get really the subtlety of this, but it's got a really nice looking tone and around the edges, there's great shading. Just, just very cool. Then there's the Karanda Ash Magnetic Blue. This is a really nice blue black, has some uh, gray tones, writes really well. I thought this was interesting because this is, I bought this in a cartridge. These little standard international cartridges. This is, I think, uh, what's that? Six cartridges for about $8. So actually probably the most expensive ink I've ever purchased in a cartridge, but uh, it was fun. It was this way I get to use this Coveco pen with the cartridges. And it's been, uh, been an interesting experience. I like that ink. Pelican Olivine. Uh, not been happy with this one. This is the, supposedly the color of the year from Pelican. So I guess it's a limited edition, but to me, it hasn't really been writing well. It's been writing like it's missing lubricant or something. So it's been sort of fickle. And I think the color is fine, but I don't really know what justifies it as being the color of the year. Uh, Oster Terracotta, I bought by accident. I'm not really into reds and oranges, but uh, you know, like all Oster inks, it's been, been writing really nicely. Just the color isn't really for me. Oster Fire and Ice is a turquoise. Uh, I think it's fine. I haven't really been blown away with it. It looks pretty nice. It's got good legibility, but uh, it's kind of just a turquoise. I thought more of the red would come out, but I'm not really getting that. The Diamond or Diamond, whatever, 1864 Blue Black is sort of their premium series, their anniversary edition, something like that. And it's a really, really dark blue black. So I think it's it's a nice ink. Uh, it's just a little dark. Almost all the time, you could barely see it as being anything but a black. In fact, in fact, here, maybe here you can see a little bit of navy there, but it really just looks like a black to me. Oster Green at Night, this is kind of more what I wanted from that Pelican Olivine. This is a really nice dark green, kind of some black tones there. Uh, and it just really does a good job. I think this is, if you want a darker green, this is the way to go. I skipped the Krishma x Eve, that was by accident. Uh, that is another ink I really like, so we'll get into that more. And then lastly, we have the Airbin, the Bien Nui, which is just a kind of a day-to-day -day standard blue that I, I don't really love. I did a full review on that, so you can check out the review if you want. I just did that one in a full review because it's uh, it seems like a more popular ink. So get rid of those two, those were the standards. And here we are with my two favorites, which actually this run are both from Krishna. We have the Krishna X Xmas Eve, and then the Krishna Sailors. And they come in little jars like this, they're pretty affordable, I think about $6. I think they're made in India. And this is actually a, like a full size, a smaller full size. It's maybe uh, 30 milliliters, I wanna say. Maybe a little bit less. Uh, but I'm really happy with these and I just wanted to do some quick writing. So this is the 
sellers, and I'll put the full name in the notes below the article, which I think the name is a little bit longer than this, but I'm using a Twisby Eco Broad. And all this writing, before I forget, is being done with this Midori paper, which is not what I tend to use in these videos, but uh, this one gives the colors a little bit more availability for shading. And I'm not sure if this is gonna come out, but if you see around the edges of those letters, you could really see that color pop and get a feel for what a nicer ink is doing on a good paper with uh, you know, a cotton paper where it could do, you know, the ink can pool and collect and do some more interesting things than on your standard rodeo or something like that. And here you could see, especially right as you're moving a little bit quicker, right around the edges of the R and the A and the N and the D, or O and the D, whatever, you could kind of see that ink doing some really interesting things. And uh, try to get the exactly right angle, because it's hard to pick up, but there's definitely some very nice shading there. And the ink is just, it looks really interesting. You know, if you're, if you're looking for a fountain pen experience and you're gonna go to the broad and put down a lot of ink on the paper and, and wait for the dry time, you should, I think, see some ink effects. So this one is really good at that. So I've been really happy with that ink. The Xmas Eve, and this is also the Krishna, I forgot it there. This one does not have the same complexity to it, but it's a nice blue. It's got a nice pop to it. I think it really stands out on that page, much more so than the Bien Nui, or even the Fire in the Ice for me, and the Lamy Blue is just kind of blown away, in my opinion. So I think if you're looking for a bold, sort of a royal blue, I think that's a really nice one. Between the two, I think for like day-to-day -day work and stuff like that, this Xmas Eve is a really nice ink where the Sailors is, has more of that special feel to it. it might be uh, a little bit much for day-to-day -day writing, but I think it looks really cool if you're into like calligraphy or letters or I'm not even sure how people use their pens. But uh, yeah, I think those are two really solid inks. I've been having a lot of fun. This is a brand I'm gonna look back at more but, uh, you know, I can't really complain about the other ones. Obviously, Oster and DMN or Diamond, whatever, are, are just phenomenal companies. So if you're looking for companies to pick up, Krishna, Oster, DMN. Uh, if you're looking for specifics, check out that Sailors, check out that Xmas Eve, check out the Magnetic Blue. And then definitely, if you have a chance, explore that 1864 line. I bought a bunch of ink from them. and it's, They've all been very cool. So uh, yeah, I'll link to everything below in the notes just for some clarity's sake. But yeah, it's my ink exploration round two. Thanks for watching.